All right, so I just got back from watching Am I Racist? The thing is, I watched the trailer earlier this year, and I'm like, what the heck is happening? What is this? But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. The movie was actually entertaining. I really like I really like Matt Walsh's dry humor. I like that whenever he, there, there are some kind of comedic moments. It is at the expense of the way that Matt Walsh comes up and makes his dry humor. I think he could be a pretty good comedian if he actually really wanted to. Overall, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. You know, without going too much into spoilers, it's basically him paying, I think it was like 25, 30,000 or $50,000 and talking to his doctor and, uh, you know, saying how like the reason why United States is extremely racist is because of white people. And then he was like, huh, if that's the case, then I should go research more. Why, uh, you know, why are we, you know, white people are innately racist, right? Because it, because, you know, according to a bunch of these people online, white people are the sole reason why the United States is a bad place to live. And so he goes to Colorado, goes into a bookstore and there's a bunch of like anti-racist books that he picks up one of them is by uh, robin d'angelo and it's called white fragility and i believe this book was really really well received by woke leftists and you know robin d'angelo i believe she is white herself and how saying that how a uh, united states is innately white and how it's really bad it's been like this since for you know 400 years ago and it's all white people's fault you gotta you know know what land you're living on you know and uh so he after reading that he goes to a um i believe a seminar or some kind of workshop he goes to a workshop and, and this is you've you've seen like clips bits and clips of this in during the trailer he goes to the workshop and he basically you know says i'm steve he goes as himself and he, he wasn't even undercover or anything like that and of course he's been he's been had they um you know he comes back and then uh, people are like oh you're actually matt walsh and he leaves and he feels like you know what i need a better disguise the whole entire movie shows how much money these left-leaning crazy uh anti-racist racist people are grifting off of white guilt some of these seminars are like 50,000 30,000 15,000 it's crazy it's insane like how much people are willing to pay for this like uh it's it's so funny though but the thing is all of this is actually it, it looks like it's fake it's like how how can you be so dumb and not know who Matt Walsh is right how can you not know who he is it's because like he puts on a like a man bun like a wig and it's still him well, I think one person was 50,000 one person was 15,000 I think Robin D'Angelo was 15,000. Another person was like 5,000. And it's basically these classes that Matt Walsh and his team at the Daily Wire would succumb him to, to make this documentary and how much money people are grifting off of white guilt. It is crazy. The most craziest part that I thought was um, insane. This also shows in the trailer too. I think it's called Dinner Race. And it's basically a Hispanic or like dark white lady and a black lady. They basically host this fancy dinner and only women could attend. So it's basically a you know a sexist thing already yeah is it race yeah race to dinner yeah di dinner is either race to dinner or dinner race i forgot what it was called and he goes there and he's like I, I can't go there since i'm not a female it's only this is a female only dinner so he basically goes undercover as a, a waiter he goes in and he you no know, those two who are organizing this discuss this is a five thousand dollar dinner he goes in and he listens to them and it's basically these two ladies old ugly ladies they are basically telling all of these white guilt fat white ladies that they are racist and how republicans are the racists and how conservatives are are racist and you gotta make, make sure that you you need to push out you know i forgot, forgot what the terminology was he's basically trying to say that you need to step out of this bubble of racism the funny part is that he has to chime in and he's like yeah i agree yeah i agree yo i want to raise a toast and i was like oh my god like some of it is really cringe but it's also really really funny the craziest one matt walsh was able to get a meeting with Robin D'Angelo for $15,000, a sit down meet. And then he talks to her and she says that she has these things all the time with big companies. And then and he, he's a asked her, what companies do you have these seminars for about, you know, white fragility? And she says, Netflix, Google, Facebook, like, holy crap, man. Like the thing is that we, we know it's happening, but now it's like confirmed by Robin D'Angelo herself. The funny part, it was um, there's one part where he, he brings in his producer which is a black guy he brings in he brings in his producer and 
then he's like, oh, I feel really, really bad, you know, for being a white guy. So I'm going to give you reparations right now. And Robin D'Angelo was like, what the hell are you doing? This is so weird. This is freaking weird. What are you doing? And he's like, what, what, what are you talking about? And he's like, and then Robin D'Angelo goes, this this white supremacist thing is, 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 is systemic. So it's part of the system. And then Matt Walsh, he says, I'm not going to be waiting for the, for the system to catch up. I'm doing this as an individual to make sure that I'm not racist anymore. And I'm going to give reparations to my black producer. And then Robin D'Angelo, I shit you not, says, I'm going to do the same thing. Fucking goes into her purse and grabs $30 and gives it to him. And the producer's like, I ain't going to say no to free money. I was like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. And the moral of the story is how much money people grift off of making white guilt. Like basically making white people feel bad that they're white. You're not trying every day to be an anti-racist. You're actually helping the white supremacy, the systemic white supremacist that's happening everywhere in our country. And it's all white people's fault. Matt Walsh actually asked, is there anything I can do to be less white? to be to have less white guilt and the answer is no you got to continue doing it more and more another funny one was in the beginning of it i think they were talking to like dr slater this white chick one of them is like so being white is bad she's like yeah you know i'm paraphrasing here being white is bad yeah it is bad so you're saying that you know uh i should start teaching my newborn and your kids anti-racist things like yeah how early should you do it as early as possible so my daughter's favorite disney princess is moana that's a good thing right and she's like yeah that's really good that's really good for halloween is it okay for me to buy her a polynesian princess outfit and she's like and he's like yeah because that's bad right you know you're i'm she really like her moana's her favorite and i'm just like Oh my god, it's like a it was like a gotcha bitch moment, right? And she didn't have any good comeback, dude. And that girl was like $25,000 or $50,000 to get a to get a talk to her. Man, man. So basically at the end of the movie, like it's basically he he's like, "All right, I I know I got a certificate as a official, you know, DEI expert, right? He gets like a he he, he takes an online class and gets a certification that he's a DEI expert and he starts his own workshop. He starts his own workshop. People come in and people pay him. It's like $3,000 for this class. And he and he basically finds out that how much white people will go through to not be racist. The craziest part was when he kept saying that he has a racist Uncle Frank. He brings in his Uncle Frank, you know, his producer wheels in his Uncle Frank in a wheelchair. And it was like, Uncle Frank, you've been racist for a long time. And I remember when we were younger in a dinner table, you made a joke about Mexicans. And you basically, the joke was, what's the difference between a Mexican and a, uh, I think it's like dinner table or something like that. The, the punchline was that the dinner table can support five of their family members or some shit like that, right? And everyone laughed and I was confused. And that's racist, uncle. You shouldn't do that. That's really bad. And then the whole entire classroom was like, that's weird, no? And then he's like, all right, what what do you guys, class, what do you guys have to say to my uncle Frank? These people don't know who uncle Frank is. And then Matt Walsh calls on the Latinx person, you know, because that's what they call them, right? Oh, you're, you're, you're a Mexican. You're a, you're a Latinx. What do you think? And he's like, you know, can I say whatever I want? And Matt Walsh like, yeah, sure. And that, that person basically looked looks at Uncle Frank and says, fuck you. And another white girl says, yeah, fuck you, Uncle Frank. You're racist. You're so fucking racist. I'm like, wow, dude, you don't even know him. This is this is a story that was made up and people just dogpile on him. I'm just like, man, and people pay for this. People, man. So yeah, uh, another cool part of the movie was when they went down to, uh, what's it called again? I think he goes down to the South into this like biker bar and he asks, you know, like, you know, are you guys racist? How do you guys feel about, you know, you know, you know, getting rid of, rid of your racist and become anti-racist? And he was basically trying to, like, push these biker guys into saying racist stuff. But none of them said anything racist. He's like, oh, I, I like black people. They're cool. You know, as long as you're cool with me, I'm cool with you. You know, it was just... There was this biker guy that had a shirt on. He says, oh, I too am a, a vegan or a vegetarian. And, and then the wife was like, no, read his shirt again. It says vaginatarian. 
Oh god, dude, that guy's shirt says Vaginatarian, and there's literally a picture of a skull with a, with a tongue sticking out like this. Oh my god, man. Oh, it's so good. It's, oh my god, it's so good. It's, it's ironically funny. It's ironically funny is because, like, these, these people, these crazy people, like, these women are, like, trying to be so serious, but then it's just... Matt Walsh's dry humor makes it so funny. Oh my god, dude. But yeah, he goes out and asks a bunch of these biker guys, uh, you know, uh, you guys are racist and try not to be racist. And they're like, you know, we're not racist. We like black people and stuff like that. But then he's like, you know what? I need to go to the source. So he, go I think he goes down to like Louisiana near the bayou. And then he talks to like a bunch of black people. Has it ever been systemically racist upon you? And then this guy who's like, no, I've been working for like 30 years. And, you know, I've never been treated in any way by United States that it was racist towards me. And it's, like, and it's like, you love America? It's like, oh, I love America. I have like, I think he said 53 or 43 grandkids. I'm like, what the? That's a lot of kids, man. That's a lot of kids. You found the shirt that I was talking about? Oh, my Astro is so funny. Oh, man. So, but he's like, well, according to this Right Fragility Robin D'Angelo book, it says that the system is rigged against black people. And he's like, I don't know about that. The only book that I read is the Bible. I'm like, man. And he's like, you want to have this book? I'll give it to you. He's like, nah, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just like, that's crazy. That's man. And the grift is so real. And I think that people like Robin D'Angelo, uh, Ebern X Kennedy, a bunch of these like extremely like race baiting folks online who are grifting really, really hard. Like Sean King is one of them. People like, uh, like they're so insane. Like what they do is they create a problem, push this problem out. And then this problem is echoed by the media, right? Because you get like Hollywood celebrities like uh, Rain Wilson, uh, Jimmy Fallon, a bunch of a-listers uh freaking uh god uh who's that uh e ellen page like all of these crazy people in hollywood saying that white people are bad white fragility make sure that you guys understand that you guys are the pro you know white people is a problem and then you get mainstream media propping up these crazy people who are writing books who are basically causing problems creating problems and pushing it out to the masses and a lot of these white people who have white guilt fall for it they fought they fall for that kind of propaganda and then you know what they do they create the problem and then they sell the cure you just need to pay fifty thousand dollars for you to go to that class you need to and going to that class basically having a black lady tell you that you're racist give me money oh man but yeah man this movie was freaking entertaining the part that was funny was when robin d'angelo brings out the 30 dollars and gives it to ben his producer everyone started clapping and laughing so hard dude it's like holy crap man it's it goes to show like how much race baiting and gr like race bait grifters these people are and it's pretty nuts it's insane it's uh but yeah man i i enjoyed the movie there's a good amount of laughs there is because of how insane it is there's a lot more things i probably didn't cover there's a scene in uh where they go to like uh the george washington monument and they, they they're holding up like a, a petition thing and wanting them to change the george washington monument from george washington to george floyd and <laughs> Painting it black and making it three inches bigger. <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh, oh god. It's it's so good, man. Holy crap. Ma oh my god, dude. Painting the George Washington Monument black, renaming it to George Floyd and three inches bigger. <laughs> It's so good, man. Yo, d the thing is that I, there was a good amount of people that Matt Walsh got to sign the petition. Oh my God, man. Yeah, it's so funny. I can't breathe, man. Holy shit. But yeah, man, uh, the movie's the movie's funny. It's actually legit funny. It's not like a comedy either. It's a documentary, but that dry humor and the, the things that happens in the movie or in, in, in his documentary that he does makes it so funny. I would say um, this is like, I guess, spoiler-ish movie. Like it's it's not too much of a spoiler what I'm talking about. But if you guys are interested in this movie, I highly recommend you to go watch the movie. 
I paid, um, I think like 18, 19 dollars to go watch this movie. There's a good amount of people at the theater. If you guys support what Matt Walsh is doing, like I would definitely support it. I would probably give this a like an eight out of ten. I, I would say eight out of ten. I would say, yeah, this this is um this is really good. I really like uh, what is a woman as well. I think what what is a woman is really good. I really sound similar style to Borat. Yes, but not as vulgar. Not as vulgar for sure. But yeah, um, if you guys have the opportunity, yeah, go go support it. I think this is really really good.